Okay, let's talk about this. Many of you have asked me if I'm going to compress my battery cells. And the simple answer is no. And well, this could have been the end of this video already. But as you know, I'm not really good with making short videos. So wait, there's more. You may remember the discussion, which was in all forums everywhere about compression of battery cells. This was probably one, one and a half years ago when EVE introduced fixture in their data sheets. So three and a half thousand cycles with compression of 300 kilogram force or two and a half thousand cycles only with no compression at all. That is 71.4% less cycles. So you're losing roughly one third of your cycle life of your batteries. That is traumatic and sad. Hence people went nuts on compression techniques. Meter long rods, bolts and spring mechanisms, plywood, plastic, aluminium, steel. We have seen it all. Okay, so let's have a look at the specifications of the EVE, of the EVE LF304 battery cell. Here we can find the cycle life and the test conditions. And this is also with 300 kilogram compressed, clamped, fixed, fixtured. Is this a word actually? Well, it is now. So the manufacturer gives us three and a half thousand cycles on these battery cells with compression. And 71.4% of that is two and a half thousand. So I would get 1000 cycles less. Let's be a bit pessimistic here and say we get only 2000 cycles. Ah, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's be super pessimistic and assume we are getting only 1500 cycles out of these battery cells here without compression. Three and a half thousand with compression, one and a half thousand without compression but under the same test conditions. Because there are always people saying, well, these are B-grade battery cells. It's bad. It will explode in your face. You shouldn't use them and, and, and whatever. So 1,500 cycles because this is D or E-grade batteries. So this would be the worst case scenario. One and a half thousand cycles, you're charging and discharging the battery once a day from 3.65 volts down to 2.5. It's a full charge cycle from 100% to 0% and back up. So then the battery will last four years until it hits 80% state of health. So 80% of the capacity will remain after four years of doing this every single day. <sighs> That's bad again, right? That's bad. Is it, is it worth it actually? I mean, from a, from a pure economy perspective, yeah, we can discharge this cell with 1019 watt hours. And because it will lose capacity over time, and after four years, we have only 80% left. So let's assume as an average, 90% of these 1019 watt hours, which is roughly 917 watt hours. So let's say 900 watt hours per day for four years. We down here in Australia pay roughly 15 US cents per kilowatt hour on energy. So you now can do the maths and would probably save around 200 US dollars in these four years. The battery cell itself costs you 135 US dollars, including shipping. So that's a 31% financial gain over four years per battery. So, now, this is with 1C charge and discharge as per the standard procedure they applied. In our solar system, we usually don't use these high currents. So let's be a bit pessimistic here again. And let's say we're using only 0.5C with these battery cells. This would still mean 150 amps from these batteries in and out. Some of you may have these high currents in their solar setup but most of you won't. But as we are a pessimistic channel here, let's assume 0.1 C of charge and discharge. So if you Google the depth of discharge of lithium iron phosphate batteries now, you'll find a ton of information, charts and graphics. 
I have selected here one from powertech.eu, but you can also find more optimistic or more pessimistic graphs, probably depending on what kind of chemistry, what kind of battery cells you actually have. So this one here I found um, to be right in the middle of all this. And you can see here the cycle life actually increases by one third, going down from one C charge and discharge to only half a C charge and discharge. This is from the red line to the green line. So from our initial 1,500 cycles, we'll get now 2,000 cycles out of this battery cell. Now, looking at the test conditions again, we can see that they are using 100% depth of discharge. So that means they are fully charging this battery here to 3.65 volts and fully discharging down to 2.5 volts only. 100% capacity usage every single day. How many of you are doing this? I would assume no one. So let's assume you have a battery pack with 15 kilowatt hours and you can cycle this by 80% each day. So congratulations, first of all. This is a very efficient usage of the battery. It's not too large, not too small, money well spent. So looking at this graph again, 80% depth of discharge gives us another cycle boost of around 50%. So we can get now 3000 cycles out of this battery. With a larger battery pack, you don't actually use 80% every single day. So let's go down to a 60% depth of discharge. So you're using only 60% of the available capacity each day. 60% of 15 kilowatt hours is nine kilowatt hours you have available from sunset to sunrise in the morning again. Just to put this in perspective, I'm using around 4.5 kilowatt hours during the night. When the sun goes down, there's no solar anymore until the morning when the sun comes out and the solar system kicks in. Four and a half kilowatt hours, including cooking, freezer, fridge, computers to edit these videos, lights, and everything else. So 60% depth of discharge will increase our cycle life by another 60%. So from 3000 to 4800 cycles, and if you have an even larger battery bank, as I have here, you probably have a depth of discharge of around 20 to 40% each day. So 30% depth of discharge will give us eight times more cycles, eight times more cycles with these batteries. So yeah, you see where this leads to when you have a very, very conservative calculation. And remember, we started with 1,500 assumed cycles without compression. If I do the quick maths again and take the actual 2,500 cycles we will get without compression, the numbers look like this. And then, then we also have the LF280K battery cells, which gives us 6,000 cycles with compression. Without compression and doing the calculations, it looks crazy like this here. So it is only one consideration looking at the cycle life of batteries. There is another aspect though, which is the calendar life, the storage life, the calendar age of these battery cells. So this is when you store the battery cell with no or very little usage only until the usable capacity goes down to 80% state of health. Well, and if you Google calendar life of lithium iron phosphate batteries, you, you won't find any pretty graphs, any exact data because the calendar life is dependent on so many other factors. Temperature is the biggest contributor to degradation. Both in combination, high temperature and high state of charge have a real negative impact. So reading through some white papers and research documents, analysis of this matter, you can find numbers of calendar life for lithium ion phosphate batteries reaching from five to 10 years. Others go up to 15 years. It all depends what kind of chemistry they have. And most of these research papers actually state 
more research needs to be done. Well, we are all pioneers in this. Battery storage with these kind of batteries is just at its dawn and there's more to come. But there's also no reason to wait for a better technology. For a battery breakthrough you may have heard or read about. Because only 0.01% of these research results actually make it into production. With these lithium iron phosphate batteries here we have a very good and safe technology at our hands. And there's, there's no reason not to use them. If with or without compression, that's up to you. But the numbers show us that cycle life is not an issue or concern and that most batteries will actually degrade from calendar aging rather than having too many cycles. There are certain exceptions of course where compression makes sense in electric vehicles for example or if you pull very high currents from your battery like 0.8 to 1c or even higher. I for myself have decided that compression is not worth doing because there's, there's no benefit. No life extension as so many are hoping for. And actually I rather maintain a gap in between my battery cells here so they have extended cooling. Because as we know now, temperature is a major factor of degradation. So I hope guys this video clears up some myths and puts the numbers in the right perspective. So please go ahead and cycle the heck out of these cells to get the most out of them. And don't be afraid. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support on the channel, all your beer donations. Fantastic to have you all here on board. And until the next video guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then, bye bye.